What's up, church? Man, it's so good to be with you today, wherever you are tuning in from. My name is Ryan, and I wanna say thank you for joining us for week three of 168. Hey, my prayer all week has been the words that we just said that the, the, the enemy may have intended things for evil, but God's going to take those things and work them out for good, and that you, this week, I'm believing during this service, are going to see a victory in your life. So I don't know where you are, I don't know what your week looked like, but get ready, because I'm believing that God is about to do something profound in your life. There's this great verse that's been in my heart for this service, Exodus 14, 14, it simply says this, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. A powerful verse, and yet a verse with, uh, there's like two sides to this equation, right? The Lord will fight for us. Great. The other side is, so just be still. <laughs> See, the second half of the equation is a little harder than the first half, isn't it? Like uh, imagine being Moses in this situation. When he hears this from God, he is uh, in that moment getting pursued by the biggest army of the known world. The Egyptian army is coming after him behind him. In front of him is the Red Sea, which they cannot cross. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. He calls out to God in desperation, God help. And the words he hears is, hey, I'm gonna fight for you. You need only to be still. I pictured Moses' like generals, army generals coming up to him like, okay, Moses, what's the game plan? We're gonna take our, our battle positions, right? Like, like let's, let's get ready to fight. And Moses just has to be like, hey, actually, uh, God said, be still. <laughs> They're looking at him like, what? Moses, what are you talking about? The Egyptian army is coming after us. And he just goes, yeah, it's, I know this sounds weird. It sounds crazy, but I think God's gonna fight for us. And we just, we just have to wait. Like we just have to be still. It's an uncomfortable feeling. And if you're anything like me, man, these last few months have, have felt very similar to that. The world um, all of a sudden is going through this giant pandemic. And if you're like me, you're like, okay, how can we help? What can we do? What are we gonna do? How do we fight back? And the answer is uh, you can't, stay home. No, 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 like, like I wanna fight, I wanna help, we can do something. Yeah, no, um, the best thing that you can do is stay in your house. The Lord's gonna fight for you, but you have to be still. Now, by the way, I know that there are some of you out there, first responders, those on the front lines, who it's like these last few months have been anything but still for you. It's been crazy, and can we all just make some noise in the comment section right now for all of you? We love you so much, you are heroes, we are with you. You're going to need some well-deserved time off once we come through all of this. We are with you and thank you for what you've done. But for a lot of us, it's been like giant pandemic. Stay still. Staying still is uncomfortable, isn't it? Well, when we stay still, it's like there's things in our souls that, that, that we're usually able to, to push down with all sorts of things and it starts to bubble up to the surface. My first car, I don't know if you remember your first car, our first car was a Pontiac. Remember those? R.I.P. Pontiac. I had a, a Pontiac G6, and I loved the thing. It ran great. Well, maybe I should say it like this. It ran great when I was going 70 down the highway. <laughs> but as soon as I got to a red light and slowed down and stopped, my car would start to shake. The engine would start to make all sorts of, of noises, right? And it's like, as long as I was going fast, everything was good. But when it slowed down, it started to make some noise. Anybody relate to that in the last few months? Everything was going good until I had to sit down and be still. All of a sudden, it's like things are starting to bubble up. So I had this trick that I did with my Pontiac. When I would be at a red light and the engine would start to make all sorts of noises, I would turn up my music. Problem solved, right? And hey, don't, I feel the judgment coming through that camera right now. Don't judge me, you do the same thing. Out of sight, out of mind, if I can't hear it, then I'm sure it's fine. I would crank up my music and pretend like everything was just fine. And I think that we tend to do the same thing as human beings when those, those things start to come up in our soul. It's like, oh, better get back to my phone, right? More and more social media, more Netflix. 
we're distractions. I've got this game on my phone, this is so embarrassing. I've got this game on my phone where you just, you just find the words hidden in, in this thing and I'm on like level 150, which is ridiculous because I'm just spending way too much time trying to ignore what's going on down here. And so whether it's pills or porn or pasta or whatever your drug of choice is, it's something that we all do. But I think the invitation today is to slow down and actually take some inventory about what's going on in our hearts, what's going on in our souls. Because what my Pontiac actually needed was just a tune-up. Just needed a tune-up. I needed to bring it into the mechanic. We had to go, we needed to go under the hood and the mechanic needed to take a look at, at the spark plugs and the gadgets and the who's, mo, mo, what, mo, what's this, I, I don't even know. I'm not a mechanic, as you can tell, right? The mechanic had to go in there and look at all of those things and tune it up. So my thought for today is obviously not a mechanic, but I am a pastor. And so what if we did a tune up for our souls? What if we in this time, just in the next 25 minutes, took some time to do a soul tune-up? So I titled this message today, Tune-Up Checklist. I'm gonna give us five things, five areas that that we need to mark off on our checklist to to do a little tune-up on our souls because you may not have your beach body ready this summer, but you can certainly have your summer soul ready by the end of this message. We're gonna get super practical. In fact, there is a worksheet that we made that you can follow along with. All of the hosts are gonna be putting the link in the chat right now. Uh, If you're watching on YouTube, you can get it in the notes. It's on the website. There's lots of ways to get it. If you can't find it, just take notes as, as you go in your own journal, but grab your computer, grab a pen, grab whatever you need, because we are going to do some work for the next 20 minutes. Somebody say, Ryan's getting really practical on us all of a sudden. Tell your neighbor, (laughs) tell your roommate, tell your spouse, this guy's actually like giving us some stuff that's going to apply to our lives this week. (laughs) Thank you, the three people that are here, I know I was laughing with Ethan earlier and he's like, you usually just tell Bible stories. This is like cool. It's like actually gonna help some people. And I was like, cool, thanks a lot, Ethan. You're a great friend and I love doing ministry with you. Okay, your tune up checklist. We're gonna go through all five of, of these. One rule before we get started and that is this. Romans 8 verse one. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Say no condemnation. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Hey, the reason that we don't like to to do a little tune-up on our souls is the same reason why I don't like to take my car into the mechanic. I think that he's gonna, I'm gonna get made fun of and I'm gonna get sold a bunch of things that I don't need and I'm a little worried about what I'm gonna find. So we're gonna start right off the bat with a rule and remember that God loves you, that he doesn't condemn you and that we're walking through this Together, So no condemnation as we do a little soul inventory. All right, five things, and they all start with the letter S. Number one, check your vision. Okay, let me rephrase that. They all start with the letter S except for the first one. (laughs) Guys, I thought so long and hard uh, about an S word for vision. Uh, I I typed it into every thesaurus and looked at it. I can't, if you can think of a better word for vision that starts with an S, please put it in the comment section right now. I tried for hours, but y'all are smarter than me. Okay, number one, check your vision. I don't mean go see an optometrist. It's not what I mean. It's not the kind of vision that I'm talking about. I mean, what is, what is your vision for your life? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Who are you? Who are you trying to become? Proverbs 29, 18 says this, where there is no vision, the people perish. Perish. That's King James version for us today. Come on. Perish is kind of an intense word, but I use it because I like that. It doesn't say where there's no vision, the people slow down. Where there's no vision, the people have to stall a little bit. It says, hey, if we don't have a vision for where we're going, we don't stand a chance. That would be like me pulling up to you in the future once we can actually be close to each other and, and going, hey, can you help me out? I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost. You'd be like, yeah, sure. Where are you trying to get to? 
Oh, you know, I don't really know. Wondering if you could help me out, though. I'm a little lost. Well, yeah, but if I'm going to help you get somewhere, I'm going to have to know where you're going. Yeah, I know. I just don't really know where I'm trying to go, right? Like, that's absurd. When you, when you open your Maps app on your phone, what's the first question and the only question that it asks you? Where are you trying to go? What's your destination? If you give me a destination, I can help you get there. Or maybe I'll say it like this. Before you can get to where you want to be, you first have to know where you want to go. That's why they pay me the big bucks around here. That is profound. Before you can get to where you want to be, you have to know where you want to go. Why am I starting with this? I think that COVID-19 has stolen a lot of hope from a lot of people. I wanna give a permission slip right now for you to start dreaming big again. I wanna give you a permission slip to start thinking long-term again, to to ask yourself the honest question in your soul. Hey, so why am I here? Why am I on this earth? Where am I going? Why do I exist? So here's how you answer that question. You fill in this blank. I exist, you fill in the blank. I exist to bring joy to the world. I exist to make heaven more crowded. I exist to bring heaven to earth. I exist to be a voice for the voiceless. I exist to be a loving father or a loving mother. I exist to raise my kids in a healthy home. Whatever it is for you, think about that for a second. Why are you on this earth? Now, I can feel the anxiety in in this room with the three people that are in this room already. So I imagine right now everybody watching, a lot of you are feeling this anxiety of like, what? geez, that's a a big question. I guess I I don't know it. I've I've never really thought about it. So three things. One, uh, this isn't like a grade, graded exam or anything. You don't have to share this with anybody. Two, you can have as many visions for your life as you want. Like you can break it down into categories of like here's the, the physical and the mental and the spiritual and the relational. And number three, um, you're free to change this mission statement for your life whenever you want. Try some things out. Take it for a test run for a a few days. I exist to create and communicate content that makes Jesus beautiful. Whatever it is for you, try it out for a few days and see what happens. So for each of these five sections, I'm going to give you an action step. And for this one, it's simply this. I exist and I want you to fill it out. Fill it out right where you're at. Fill it out throughout the course of this week and declare it out loud. In fact, write it somewhere where you're gonna see it and, and like put it on your steering wheel or on your mirror or on your, the lock screen phone on, or the lock screen on your phone, whatever it is where you're gonna see it often and say it out loud as often as you can. Now, if you're having trouble, uh, Let me say this before we move on to number two. Oftentimes, we know what the what is, like we know the vision, we know why we are on this earth, but if we're honest, we have no idea what the how is, right? And so we know God put these big dreams on our heart, the what. The problem is we're terrified of of the how and we have no idea how we would be able to do those things. So instead of just declaring it out loud, We like keep it to ourselves and we pretend like, well, you know, as soon as God gives me like all of the details, then I'm gonna be able to know how to to do this thing. I wanna free you up. Just start declaring it over your life. Whatever that thing is that you feel when you're in prayer, when you're talking to your spouse, when you are being your true self, whatever you feel like you are on this earth to do, write that thing down and just start declaring it over your life. Start declaring the what and the how will work itself out as you go. I love uh, storytelling, the, the art of storytelling. I study the craft often. And one thing that screenwriters say all the time is, hey, when you're in the writing room, the worst thing that you could possibly do is have in the back of your mind that still small voice going, you're never gonna be able to pull that scene off. Right, Because when you're writing the story and you're working on this pivotal scene that's, that's gonna change the trajectory of the entire journey that the hero is on, but you're going, we're not gonna be able to film that, then all of a sudden the story starts to suffer. 
I think we do the same thing with our lives where we hold ourselves back and we go, I'm not gonna declare that about my life because I'm never gonna be able to pull that off, right? What screenwriters will tell you is just write the story. We'll figure out the how later. Let's just get the story down. What I wanna tell you is just start declaring it over your life. Because here's the thing, God's the producer in this metaphor for your life. And so let's start declaring some big things, trusting that God is going to bring the how about. Because by the way, if your vision is so big that only God could ever bring it to pass, then when it does come to pass, guess who's gonna get the glory? Not you, it's going to be him. So dream big, what is your vision? Some of us need to get some hope back in our lives and start declaring some vision over our lives. Number two, Check your system. So once you check your vision, then the next question is, okay, now what is the system that you have in place to work that vision out? You see how these are building off of each other. Ryan's getting practical today, I told you. I just said Ryan in the third person and that is embarrassing. I've been doing Insanity, you guys, which is a, a home workout that is just so difficult, but Sean T. always refers to himself in the, in the third person, so there you go. That one was for Sean T. I don't suggest that, that workout, I do. It's just so brutal, it's so hard. I'm out of shape, what can I say? Okay, I'm getting distracted. Number two, check your system. Check your system, mission is great, but how are you going to get there? Craig Rochelle calls, uh, defines system this way. A system is how you accomplish the what. So if the vision is the what, the system is how we get there. So if you've been around Red Rocks Austin, you know that as a church, we have a mission. We exist to make heaven more crowded. But we don't just have a, a vision, we don't just have a mission, we also have a system. We do that by helping people what? Experience God, find family, discover purpose, go lead. Don't tell me you forgot those steps just because we haven't been together. Come on now, our system matches or our system is built to help us achieve our vision. So that's the church. What about you, your own soul? Because this is a tune-up for your own individual soul. Do you have a system that matches up with your vision? You know, in the, the office, Michael Scott, when he goes off and tries to create his own company, and uh, he's got everything set up and the prices are so low that they go in to talk to their advisor. And, and the advisor is like, hey, you're losing money by selling paper this low. You guys aren't going to make it. What does Michael Scott say? He goes, you know what, Ty? Crunch those numbers again, All right? And he's like, oh, it's a program, you can't. And he's like, Ty, crunch the numbers, right? Crunch. And we, we laugh at Michael Scott because he's keeping the same system, but he's expecting different results. We know that it's not going to work. And yet, let's be real, man. How, how many of us do the same thing in our own lives? Does your system match your vision? If it doesn't, adjust your system. Right? If your vision is, man, I want to be the best father that I can possibly be, but your system is, I don't have any time in the day to hang out with my kids, you got a great vision, the system's broken. Right? We, we, we adjust the system or else we end up going through the motions again and again. In fact, Albert Einstein said it this way. He said, the definition of, of insanity, <laughs> another reference to insanity, different insanity, is doing the same thing over and over again but expecting different results. So somebody say, check your system. If you're not getting the results that you want, then something in your system is broken. But here's the good news, man, uh, the, the best way to fix your system is just to try things. Just try things. Just, just start moving, start taking action. In fact, I'll say it like this, vision usually comes through prayer. Vision comes through prayer, but systems are built through trial and error. Do you like that? Vision comes through prayer. Systems are built through trial and error. That'll preach right there because for some of you, you won't slow down long enough to get a vision and hear from God. You're just go, 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 go and hoping that he's going to speak to you, but you're not, you gotta slow down and pray and ask God, hey, what should I be doing with my life? But then there's a bunch of you over here on this side that are, are, are just so good at listening to what God is, is telling you, but you're not great at taking that first step and putting some motion to it. 
right? Like, like we have to start, like, like we're expecting God to give us all of the what and the how while we're, while we're in our prayer closet. How, what I've seen, my experience has been, he'll give you the vision Vision comes in prayer, but then you gotta start taking steps and, and learn the system through trial and error. And, and hey, listen, I wish it wasn't this way. I'm the guy that just loves to hoard information and study. Like if I had it my way, I would have read books about how to plant a church for 10 years before we ever did this. It doesn't work that way. We knew the vision, the vision came through prayer, Planning the church came through a whole lot of trial and error. If you work with Doug and Ethan every day, you're gonna have a whole lot of trial and error. But that's the point to it because we learn and we adjust as we go. So our action step for number two, for checking our system. I wanna challenge you to do this. Start a journal. Start a, a journal. I like to journal and I'm not ashamed to say it. Journaling is so good for your soul. And if you're like, Ryan, I don't have time to start a journal. What are you talking about? I'm gonna make it super simple. Here we go. If every morning I want you just to write, I am or I exist to, and then put your vision, your mission statement in there. And then below it, write, therefore, today I will, and list three things that you're going to do to propel you toward your vision. And then at the end of the day, write it out again, I exist too. And then uh, just simply say, and today this propelled me forward and this pulled me back. I exist to be a great father and a great husband. Today, playing catch with my kids propelled me forward. And today, that bad habit that I tend to go back to pulled me back. Start writing it down and see what happens. Okay. How's our soul tune-up coming along so far? Is this fun? I hope you guys are following along with the worksheet. Check your vision. Number two, check your system. Number three is check your speed. Check your speed. There is a rhythm to life. And a lot of us have lost that rhythm during this pandemic. And so since there is a rhythm to life, I need, uh, I need a drummer up here to, to help me illustrate this. My good friend Corey, um, our, our drummer, is going to come up to the stage. And uh, we're going to talk through this because in Genesis 2-2, God is creating everything. He's creating all of creation. And, it, and it, there's a flow to it, right? There's evening, there's morning the first day, there's evening, there's morning the, the second day. And then in Genesis 2, ver, verse 2, it says this, by the seventh day, God had finished the work he was doing, so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Six days on, one day off. Six days on, one day off. There is a cadence to creation. There is a rhythm to this thing. Our soul was built to operate with a routine. How many of you at some point this in the last few months have, have asked yourself, hey, what day is it again? Wait, do we have, we have church today? I thought it was Wednesday. What happened, right? Because it's like every day is blending together and we've lost kind of this, this routine of six on, one off, six on, one off, and somewhere along the way, we've got messed up. So Corey, you ready to help us out? Corey, everybody, Corey is one of our best friends. One of our very first prayers when we got here was, Lord, we need a drummer. <laughs> we just, we need somebody who can play drums, please. And little did we know, not only did we get uh, the best drummer in Austin, but he also became one of our best friends. So I'm social distancing right now, so I'm gonna stay over here, but I'm also sentimental because I don't see people much anymore. But Corey, thank you for being here. So I'll illustrate it like this. Corey, let's say, as a drummer, work, which is a good thing, something that we're all on this earth to do, is like the beat. Corey, can you, can you give us a little beat? Love it. Beat keeps, it's, it's like the work force, right? It keeps the worship band on time. We need the beat. But if a drummer just sticks to the beat the entire time, it's gonna get mundane and boring. And so what drummers have learned to do is at the end of a measure, they'll throw a, a, a fill in. Am I saying this right? Throwing a, a, a fill in. And, and so let's say that the beat is work and the fill is rest. Give us an example of a little fill. Gosh, 
It would take me like three years to, to be able to do that, right? So we've got the beat, which is the work, and we got the fill, which is the rest. And when you put it together, Corey, it sounds like this. Come on, that's good, that's good. They're cheering from home. I can hear them cheering from home. It's so nice to have somebody else in this room with me right now. Please, can you just stay up here the whole service? Okay, here's the point. Hey, if we find ourselves in a pandemic and the first thing that we do is we just go, I'm just gonna double down on work. I just gotta, I gotta work, 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 right? Then life starts to feel like a drummer who just plays a beat with no extra fills, right? Can you give us some of that? This is some of us right now. Emails, I gotta have more meetings. I gotta sell more things. I gotta make sure the family is provided for. I gotta make sure everything is okay. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Work is a good thing because it pays the bills, but that was rather uninspiring, wasn't it? I mean, no offense, I asked you to do it, right? But see, on the other side, if it's just work, our life is uninspiring. If it's all rest, then it sounds an awful lot like this. Corey just illustrated so many of your shelter in places over the last few months, right? It started off so fun and then it just lost all sense of purpose and meaning and it's just complete chaos. Why? Because God created this world with a, with a system. We are created to both work and rest. Six days on, one day off. Six days on, one day off. Corey, show us how it's supposed to go. You ready? Here we go. Work, 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 rest. Work, 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 rest. Work, 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 rest. Man, hey, if this auditorium was full right now, they would be going nuts. Can we give it up for Corey, our drummer? Hey, we need to find our rhythm, don't we? We gotta find our rhythm. We gotta get our groove back. This thing has messed up our schedules. It's like the, the cards have been reshuffled. And so let's find some routine in our life. Let's check our speed. Let's make sure it's not too much work on one hand, but also not too much rest on the other hand. It's work and rest because too much work is uninspiring. Too much rest is chaotic. If you discover the symbiotic relationship between work and rest, which is to say that they help each other out and they work together, then you become a force to be reckoned with for the kingdom of heaven on this earth. There's something powerful about checking our speed. And so here's an action step. We're getting, we're, I told you we're getting practical. Action step for checking your speed. Everyone say, go on a nature walk. I'm not kidding. Go on a nature walk. Walk, man, I've been doing this every day and it is changing things for me because when you're stuck at home, one thing that can happen, and I know that's kind of funny, but I'm being serious right now. One thing that can start to happen is we can start to get numb and we can stop, stop using our five senses. And there's something really beautiful about getting out into nature, all right, taking a walk. It doesn't even have to be nature. You can just walk around your block or whatever it is and just using your five senses, and before you, you're like, oh, Ryan's just getting all mystical on us. No, actually, I'm just trying to be a Jesus follower because in Matthew chapter six, all of his disciples are starting to, to freak out. And Jesus in verse 26 just says, hey, look at the birds of the air, <laughs> you know? And then the disciples are, they're scared and they're terrified about everything going on. And Jesus is just like, oh, consider the lilies. It was such a nice way to say that, right? Like, look at the flowers. Listen to, to the birds of the air. Feel the ground under your feet. It's a good thing to be human and use your five senses. And so I wanna challenge you, if you are struggling with your speed, checking your speed, what if you just got out into nature and, and used your senses, right? Look at everything going on, feel the wind, and sip an iced coffee that you got on your pit stop from your local coffee shop because that is heaven on earth. Danny the barista, can I get an amen? That one's a user's choice. You can do whatever you want there. I just like iced coffee. Okay, so get on, out on a nature walk. Check your speed. Make sure we got a good work, life, rest, balance. I'm telling you. 
it'll change things. We're gonna finish up here. We got two more and we'll go fast through these two. In fact, Ben, Corey, you can come on back up. <laughs> Give me some more work, 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 rest. Number four, check your social circle. Check your social circle. There's this great story where Moses is in the middle of a battle. Moses, Exodus, Moses. Exodus 17, 12 says this. When Moses' hands grew tired because he's raising his hands, praying for his people, they took a stone and put it under him and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up, one on one side, one on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So, so Moses is up there praying. He's got to keep his hands raised and, and he's, he's starting to get tired. And so he's got a guy on his left and a person on his right and they're holding his hands up. What a beautiful illustration that we all need people in our circle. Right? And right now, I get it, we're social distancing, but that doesn't mean we can't have people in our phone. We can't be doing, we, we need to be doing Zoom calls together. We need to be sending text messages, make phone calls, do whatever you need to do. Make sure you have people in your corner. And, and by the way, as Ethan said in week one of this whole thing, people in your corner who won't just, just show grace to you and just say, no, everything's fine all the time, but then on the other hand, won't just speak truth with no grace to you and say mean things, or um, yeah, speak mean things and like take the wind out of your sails, but rather, like Chris Hodges says, find people who understand this quote. Truth without grace is mean, grace without truth is meaningless, but truth and grace together are good medicine. Surround yourself with people who will, will call you out, but will also love you. We need that now more than ever. It's not a time to isolate. It's a time to come together virtually over the internet. And by the way, that's why we offer groups. That's why we offer hangouts. That's why we try to do as many things throughout the week as we can to make sure we're together as a family. So action step is simply this. Make one phone call. Make one phone call to somebody who is in your circle and just encourage them. Just encourage them. Just thank them. Say thank you for, for what you are doing in my life. Thank you for continuing to be my friend in this time. I love getting to do life with you. Make a phone call. Shoot a text. Just, just, just keep the connection going because we need to check our social circles. And then the last one is simply this, check your sources. Check your sources. So remember, check your vision, check your system, check your speed, check your social circle, and lastly, check your sources. Remember being in school and I would always get like B's on every paper that I'd write because the teacher would be like, that was really great and creative. You have no sources. Like there's no credible source to this. It would always be so frustrating. You'd have to go back and make the bibliographies and all of that. Well, what, it, what I mean by check your sources is what is the, what, what, what voices are you letting into your life? What sources are you letting in to your life? What story are you believing about your life? Hey, the world is a loud place. <laughs> Man, everybody's got an opinion, right? Everybody loves to tell you what they think about things. It's good, we need each other. Right? It's like, let's not, let's not bury our heads in the sand. News, for example, news is a good thing. Let's be informed. But check your source because how much of it are you intake? Like how, how much of your life are you just hearing news all the time? Telling, listening to people talking uh, about the world, what they think about the world, as opposed to going back to the source and talking to God about the world that he created. Right? Like, like how often are we listening to our old college friend who has loud opinions uh, about things instead of listening to the one who created the entire universe? How, how often 
Are, are we listening to the thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy when meanwhile the good shepherd is whispering in our ear, hey buddy, I've come that you may have life and life to the full. We gotta check our sources, especially in this time and, and remember that there is a creator God who is king on his throne and nothing about that has changed and he loves you and he's for you and he's got a plan and a purpose for your life. So this one is very real to me because I experienced it this morning. I, uh, I've been doing this long enough that I should know better, but the morning, the, like the first few minutes of my morning, the day that I'm preaching a sermon are vital for me. I know that I have to get up and get in my chair and start declaring my I am statements right away. I am a child of God. I am chosen. I am called, right? I need to remind myself who I am right away. But this morning, I was up late last night working on this thing. And this morning, I hit the snooze button a few too many times, you know? Man, it didn't take long. It didn't take long before all of those thoughts came into my mind. You know the thoughts. The thoughts from the other sources. Ryan, you don't know how to preach. Ryan, no one wants to listen to you do a soul tune-up. Your soul's a mess. Who are you? Who are you to say anything to them right now? Just, just stop, right? And I'm like laying there in my bed like, man, should I just call Doug and like tell him, tell him just to go on without, like, am I done? Right, it's amazing how fast those thoughts can come. It's amazing how fast the insecurities can, can come. And that's why we need to, especially in this time, check your sources. And so I got up out of bed, I got into my chair, I have an I am statement paper that I put right on my desk and I just started declaring these truths over my life. My action step for you right now is to make some I am statements. I got you started with four right here that I use. I am a child of God, I am chosen, I am called, I am more than a conqueror, I can do this. And you start declaring those I am statements over your life, things start to change. You start declaring those I am statements over your life at the beginning of every morning before you go to your phone, I promise you, and I promise you, you will start to see the trajectory of your life change almost immediately. It's powerful. We gotta be checking our sources right now. Again, it doesn't mean we shut off the world. It doesn't mean we bury our heads in the sand. It just means that we let the voice of God, the voice of our creator be louder than all the noise. Let it be louder than all the noise. And I'll say this just to land the plane. Uh, taking your car into the mechanic to get a tune-up is intimidating because you're scared of what you're gonna find. You're scared that the mechanic is gonna be mean. You're scared that the mechanic is gonna take advantage of you. And so let me just remind you in a pastoral way right now that, that we are calling you to check your soul, do a soul tune up this week to continue to, to work this worksheet that you have and fill it out because you don't have a, a father who uh, is evil and wants to take from you. You have a father who wants to give to you. In fact, when Jesus' disciples go, hey, Jesus, how do we pray? How do we pray? I don't know how to sit down and pray. The way that he says to start is you start by going, I have a father. He goes, say, our father. Start there. Start there. We have a dad who loves us. And so how do we do a soul checkup? We start by saying, Father, Dad, thank you. Thank you that you aren't condemning me. Thank you that you just want to walk this journey with me. Thank you that you want to give me a vision. You want to check my system. You want to help me check my speed. You want to help me check my, my social circle. And you want to help me check my sources. Come back to that as often as you can. Remember, you have a dad who walks with you through this. Red Rocks, we love you so much. Listen, we believe the best for you. We believe that you are just getting started and that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And so let's just tune up. Let's just tune up really practically. Let's get our souls ready for this summer by tuning up and get our souls ready for what is coming in the rest of 2020 because we believe that God's about to do immeasurably more than we could ever think or ask in and through our church. So Father God, would you help us with this soul tune up this week? 
Would you help us with this tune-up checklist as we walk through these five steps? Would you give us vision? Would you help us with our system? Would you help us check our speed? Would you help us, Father God, check our social circle? And Lord, would you help us to check the sources that we are letting into our lives? So Lord, we love you so much. We give you today. We give you this worship in Jesus' name. Amen.